Hi guys! Welcome back to today's spooky special! We are going to be making a variety of DIY treats for a baby is brewing themed baby shower. There's Rice Krispie treats, cauldron caramel apples, cakesicles, Oreo pops, cake pops, dessert kebabs and cupcakes. The mummy-to-be will love all these treats on her dessert table to celebrate the new pumpkin in the patch. And surprise, I wanted to give back to all of my lovely subscribers with this giveaway for your chance to win this Halloween diaper cake with a Bye Bye Baby gift card and pumpkin booties. It's the perfect gift for a friend or family member or you, any mommy to be. To enter, you need to be subscribed to this channel. Leave a comment below on this video with a ghost emoji and also be following me on my Instagram. I will be messaging the winner on there October 16th, which is a week from today. So don't forget to enter right now. First, we're starting with our Rice Krispie treats. And if you've decorated them before, you know they take lots of chocolate to dip. And the surfaces can be quite bumpy from the cereal. So I'm going to show you this method that is the most affordable and achieves the smoothest decorating canvas with this glazed recipe, which only requires three cups of powdered sugar, four tablespoons of water, two tablespoons of light corn syrup, and one teaspoon of clear vanilla extract. I'm giving this a mix, mix, mix until combined and you will have a glossy and shiny glaze. The consistency will look like this and you can go ahead and divide it up into four bowls and cover them with gel-based food coloring. Then transfer each one into plastic squeeze bottles for the most control. All I'm doing is outlining around the Rice Krispie and filling it in with a light pressure so it doesn't run off the edges by pushing and tapping lightly, similar to how you would flood a cookie. If you try it this way, you are really going to love the result. It saves time and the hassle of heating chocolate while looking incredible without all the bumps. If you prefer to make your own homemade Rice Krispies, I show my recipe in my other baby shower video if you'd like. But with store-bought, there's much less waste since they are cut perfectly square. There's pros and cons to both. It's all up to what you like. After I finish outlining with the orange, purple, and green color glaze, allow them to dry and it's decorating time! For the jack-o'-lantern design, I'm taking a stiff black royal icing and piping the triangles and mouth with a tip number three. This royal icing was made with a royal icing mix and water, which is super easy, so I will provide the link down below if you would like to try it out. Of course, I wanted to give Jack a glow by applying a flood consistency icing with sparkly gold sanding sugar. For this technique, dab a thin layer of the flood icing inside of the outline with a small brush and sprinkle the sanding sugar right over it. This gold sanding sugar smells so good, it actually reminds me of maple. And our jack-o'-lanterns can light up a whole room. Next, for Mr. Vampire, I piped two arches for his hairline and filled in his hair with zigzags. This is my favorite way to add texture. And added on some sugar decorations that look like googly eyes by sticking them on with icing and a curve for a smile with two teeth. By dragging out white icing and releasing the pressure at the end into a teardrop shape, and he looks fantastic. To bring Mr. Frankenstein to life, I'm piping his hair with a zigzag pattern straight across with his googly eyes, then finishing his squiggly smile and scar with one diagonal line and two short lines right over it. To complete the details on Frankenstein and Jack, I sliced Tootsie Roll candies in half and attached them on with melted chocolate as a glue for the stem and bolts. Just hold them down for a few seconds until they are secure. The last spooky character we can forget is Max the Mummy. 
After his googly eyes are in place, the fun part is to wrap them up with the mummy strips by alternating and overlapping with tip number 47 with the texture side up. This is a basket weave tip. Throughout the whole video, you are going to see this glitter pump a lot because it's such a convenient way to add sparkle to all of our treats. I highly recommend it. Now the next beautiful treat we are making are these ghost emoji casicles that are pumpkin spice flavor on the inside and are made with this delicious, perfectly pumpkin cake mix for the casicle dough. Except we are tweaking the recipe that's on the box. You are going to add three eggs with two tablespoons of heavy cream. This ingredient is absolutely essential for a rich taste without making the dough too greasy and to those two tablespoons, pour in enough water to equal one cup of liquid and a third of a cup of vegetable oil. The best part about this base recipe is it's so versatile, you can switch out the cake mix and make different yummy cake pop and casicle dough flavors. After mixing up the batter, one of my tips and tricks are to make cupcakes. That way the cake crushes up quick and easy when we create the casicle dough. And also the cupcakes are more moist without that crusty layer that forms on top of your cake. Once you have the batter into a 12 cup muffin pan, you can pop them in the oven for 20 minutes at 350 degrees or until a toothpick comes out clean. These smell like pumpkin spice and everything nice. I'm just allowing them to slightly cool until warm. And you can remove the liners from the cupcakes to get them ready for the food processor. Just throw them all in there and grind everything up. If the cake gets stuck, pulse a little at a time until the fine crumbs come into a compact piece of dough and press together that looks like this. To work that dough, I'm kneading it into a ball with my gloves on by getting in there and squishing it like a poulet dough and storing it in the fridge wrapped in plastic wrap while we mold the chocolate. For cake pops, I recommend chilling your dough overnight since a firmer dough helps you shape them but with casicles that isn't needed. For molding the chocolate shell, you will need white melted chocolate. Here I have Merkin Super White and this adorable silicone ghost mold with sparkly popsicle sticks. The technique is to pour a generous spoonful of chocolate into the mold and spread to the edges with a brush. I find it helpful to use dabbing strokes to coat evenly without making the chocolate too thin. But if needed, feel free to get extra chocolate on your brush or even drop in another spoonful. The goal is to thoroughly coat the mold so no worries if it doesn't look perfect and slot the popsicle stick in through the slot. I'm setting this layer in the fridge for 10 minutes and the next important step is to reinforce around the bottom near the popsicle stick and any other areas where the chocolate may be thin such as the edges to prevent any cracks. Just remember the cake is going inside so it is best to spread evenly to keep the chocolate as flat as possible. It is time to place our pumpkin spice layer into each cavity by pinching off a piece of the dough and pressing to fill with cake and for the scalped edges near the stick, fill with smaller pieces keeping in mind not to overfill with cake and to leave room for the final layer of chocolate which is going to be the back of the cakesicle. I apply this layer with a plastic squeeze bottle so the chocolate goes exactly where I want it to go, working as quickly as possible so that the chocolate doesn't dry too quickly. And you can always flatten the back with a spatula if you prefer. These cakesicles need one last round in the fridge for 10 minutes and our ghosts are ready to float out of the mold. I gently peel the edges away first and push the stick through the slot. To transform these cuties into ghost emojis, let's dress them up with fondant decorations. I flattened a tiny piece of black fondant for the small eye and cut the larger one with a round decorating tip. As the mouth, I took a circle cookie cutter and sliced the piece of fondant in half. And for the silly tongue, I cut pink fondant with a small oval cookie cutter and sliced the edge off. 
Before attaching the fondant pieces, I pumped that same edible glitter spray on and adhered the fondant in place with a dot of corn syrup that's all you need. Boo requested some other friends to make it a party, which are these festive chocolate covered Oreo Pops. And I found these super cool Halloween edition Oreos at the store that I had to get for this video. To start, I'm filling the mold halfway, and before doing this, I recommend opening up the slits where the sticks go, because sometimes if you get a new mold, they may not be open yet, and we don't want to find that out when you go to insert the stick. I pop it in slightly just to hold in place and stick it through the cream portion of the Oreo and cover the top with more spoonfuls of melted chocolate, making sure to tap the mold to settle it out. I achieved the orange and lime colored chocolate with Color Mill oil based candy coloring and if you are new to coloring chocolate, I have a chocolate basics video on my channel if you would like to learn more. The Oreo Pops are a one step process. All you need to do is chill for 20 minutes and pop them right out of the mold. One of my favorite finds this spooky season by far was a skeleton hand mold that I shaped out of white fondant and placed on the Oreo with corn syrup. Caution, handle him with care, this hand is very fragile and we don't want to break any of his bones. Next, I'm spraying on the edible glitter spray to add a touch of sparkle. Taking black royal icing and a tip number two, I'm piping two pie slices with another line down the center of each one, and you will start to see the creepy crawly spider web when you connect the line. Another awesome design is this bat that I created with a mold and black fondant, and to make all the colors pop on the green Oreo, I decorated with assorted Halloween jimmies and gold star sprinkles. For the orange Oreo design, I piped on a jack-o'-lantern face the same as we did on the Rice Krispie Treat with a black outline and gold detailing that included the flood icing and sanding sugar. A dessert table is not complete without cake pops. Here I have the same pumpkin spice cake pop dough from the Cakesicles and before you shape, it needs to be at room temperature. I form it into a tight ball and another trick is to glide it across a silicone mat instead of rolling in your hands. Just when you right about have a ball with no cracks, I'm placing it in a round one ounce My Little Cake Pop mold. It doesn't do all the work for you, but it's great as a guide for portion control to get them all the same size. Make sure to smooth out the seam and work out any imperfections on the silicone mat for an ultra smooth finish. With all these combined tips, you will be able to achieve crack free cake pops that don't fall off the stick. Right after your cake pops are rolled, I like to insert the sticks right away to ensure the dough is fresh and there are no cracks. With the eyeball design, I'm dipping the tines of the fork into my melted chocolate and carefully pushing into the cake without changing the shape of the ball. The fork makes the eyeballs look so much more spooky. For the remaining cake pops, I'm using colorful paper straws that I dip into a small amount of melted chocolate and shake off the excess so it doesn't run down the stick. Then insert into the center of the cake ball as far as the straw goes without going through the other side. Afterwards, I let them set for about 10 to 15 minutes to allow the chocolate to create a seal around the cake. Get ready to dip. I recommend to use a deep dipping container or mug and to thin out your chocolate beforehand with Paramount Crystals or oil for a smooth dip. 
Also, I dip straight in and out just until covered. I don't advise to twist them around too long or the chocolate can suction the cake inside and cause it to fall off the stick. In between each dip, shake your mug to settle out the chocolate and tap lightly when shaking the excess off. The cake pops look so vibrant in all the Halloween colors. Once they have dried, I decorated the white cake pop with a green iris and black pupil that I cut out of fondant with one inch and half inch circle cutters. And for the red vein pattern, I'm piping red royal icing with a tip number two by alternating squiggle lines. I find it helpful to decorate cake pops on a block of floral foam to keep it steady as you rotate it similar to a stand. The green cake pop is turning into the Wicked Witch of the Rest. To give her hair a makeover with highlights, I'm cutting Airheads Extremes, leaving the red and orange strips next to each other and cutting the strip in half, then slicing four sections to look like realistic strands of hair with a fringe effect. Tiny scissors are your best friend for this process. If the blade on your scissors gets too sticky, feel free to wipe them off in between. Prior to cutting these, I also tried making the hair with fondant, but that didn't work out because the fondant would crack and dry out. However, the Airheads Extremes do the trick. We gave the Wicked Witch of the West some highlights with this two-toned hair, and I also cut smaller pieces to look like bangs. All we need to do is secure them to the crown of her head with green melted chocolate on the front and back. I put her beady eyes on with two dots of black icing and edible sugar pearls with a curve for her smile. All she's missing is her hat that is made out of bugles and Oreo cookies. I prepared the Oreos by twisting it open and removing the cream and put a bugle on a dipping fork to coat with purple chocolate. This tool makes dipping neat and less free. To coat the Oreo, drop it into your magical cauldron of purple chocolate and dig it out with your dipping tool, shaking the excess off before placing on a sheet of parchment or wax paper. When they have completely dried, assemble the cone and brim by holding them together with melted chocolate and giving it a touch of magic with the edible glitter spray. Finally, it's time to put her hat on by holding it in place with melted chocolate for a few seconds. Excuse my camera, I apologize for it going out of focus. I drew on a classic pumpkin face with black edible marker. From experience, the Americolor markers work best for this. Other brands stop writing on the surface of the cake pop almost immediately and dry out and we don't want that happening. But it's always a good idea to be safe and have a few Americolors on the side. Another simple but eye-catching look is to coat the cake pops in assorted colors of sparkly sanding sugar. My go-to method is applying Deb and Hold Edible Adhesive. It's amazing because you don't have to rush sprinkling the sugar on while the chocolate is still wet. I brush on an even layer and spread it all over the dry cake pop and you can take your time sprinkling the sugar. I can't stress how much I love this product for chocolate covered apples and cake pops. These fun dessert kebabs add so much variety to your treat selection. The jack-o'-lantern on top is actually a cake pop. This time I prepared chocolate cake pop dough, same recipe, different mix with the Pillsbury Devil's Food and rolled them out with the same tricks I showed you. To put your cake pop on the kebab, these are very long lollipop sticks to leave room for the ghost and Frankenstein. If your dough is dry like my chocolate dough was, a quick fix is to seal the cracks by spreading melted chocolate over them before you start sipping. Go ahead and dip all the cake pops into the orange chocolate for the pumpkins 
and after setting them aside to dry, I decorated with black gray icing and a tip number one for a more delicate look. The middle of the kebab is Casper the Ghost. I took an edible marker, any brand works fine to draw on his face. The marshmallows are easy to draw on. Frankenstein is coming back to haunt us with the Rice Krispie Treats. I slice them in half so they are all ready to go for the kebabs. First, slide on the ghost marshmallows and finish with the Rice Krispies. The sticks will get sticky from all the marshmallows, but they can be cleaned off with a damp cloth. This Frankenstein is a mini version of the big monster we made before. I covered the top with green glaze without overflowing the Rice crispy and decorated with zigzag hair, googly eyes, his mouth, and a signature scar. An idea that is simple to DIY yet creative and unique are these cauldrons and candy bucket cupcakes. I fill the muffin pan with slightly less batter so the flat cupcake fits snugly inside of these mini treat buckets, which I will also link down below. And the rim around them need to be trimmed with clippers or cuticle cutters. For the pumpkin bucket, I'm making the cuts all around with the cuticle scissors where you see the lines in the rind of the pumpkin and trimming through those slits in a circle. The cauldrons have a thicker plastic and rim. You are going to make the slits around with the clippers and cut through them with a cuticle scissors. When the treat buckets are cut and look something like this, place the cupcakes inside and top with a swirl of green buttercream using a 1M decorating tip. Also, you are going to find a few witches stuck in my cauldron. They are a top where I made out of black fondant, cut with witches boot cutters, striped paper straws, and top the fondant with black disco dust. Frosting on the pumpkin bucket cupcakes is an amazing chocolate fudge frosting recipe. It's very tasty, but at the same time, also very stable to support the weight of all the heavy candies. I arranged fun sized chocolate bars, candy corns, gummy worms, and tootsie rolls for the ultimate trick or treat pumpkin pail bucket. And the swirls were piped with a decorating tip 1A. Last but not least, these cauldron caramel apples are perfect for the baby that is brewing. I begin by cleaning the apples in very hot water that has been mixed with one tablespoon of white vinegar and turn the apples in there for 10 seconds. This step helps to remove the waxy outer layer, otherwise your caramel won't stick to the skin. Now they should be squeaky clean, I make sure to dry them really well with a towel and snap the stems off by giving them a twist. It is key for your apples to be kept cold, so I let them hang out in the fridge for an hour. Next, it is time to insert some wooden candy apple sticks by hammering straight down into the core. And just in case any juice escaped from inserting the sticks, give all your apples another good dry. This caramel is made from scratch, yet prepared in the microwave with few ingredients. Into a tall measuring cup, we are going to combine one stick of melted butter that has been slightly cooled, a half a cup of light brown sugar, a half a cup of granulated sugar, a half a cup of corn syrup, and half a cup of sweetened condensed milk. You are going to combine all the ingredients by scraping the bottom. If any brown sugar or butter isn't thoroughly mixed, the caramel can separate and become grainy. To heat the caramel, I'm microwaving in 2 minute intervals for a total of 3 times, stopping between each interval to stir the caramel and scrape around the sides to prevent any crystallizing. 
After completing the last two minute interval, I check the temperature with an infrared thermometer. The range for caramel should be between 240 to 245. To make the cauldron color, I'm stirring in black gel food coloring until I reach a rich black shade. And to give the caramel even more of a spectacular look, I mixed in the turquoise edible tinker dust. Get your apple and angle the measuring cup to let the caramel pull up in the corner and swirl the apple around, leaving some of the skin peeking out. Otherwise, the apple can ooze if the caramel is all the way to the top. Wipe some of the extra off, but it's completely okay if you leave a little extra for the rounded cauldron effect. A really great tool I used for the top rim of the cauldron was an extruder. I slipped a piece of black fondant inside, and once it is completely tight and shut, spin the handle and watch a rope come out of the bottom. You can cut the fondant when the rope is to your desired length. Before making the final cut, Measure to check where the rim should be, and attach it on with a thin layer of dab and hold adhesive. It is time to drip the green goo out of the cauldron. My favorite way is to put the green chocolate in a squeeze bottle and vary the length of the drips. The consistency shouldn't be too clumpy, yet it shouldn't be too runny either. I like the chocolate smooth without being too loose so it doesn't run all the way down the cauldron. Bubble, bubble, toil and trouble. Finish off the bubbly green potion with sugar decoration. These are some eyeballs gold stars, bones, green sixlets, and spiders that I stuck on with green chocolate. And don't forget to sprinkle on edible gold glitter. This one is the Tinker Dust brand. I hope you enjoyed brewing up these treats with me for an October baby shower. And these ideas gave you lots of inspiration for your loved ones or small business. It's Christina here. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.